tools for different Python frameworks. Regarding to search engines, it's really difficult to find useful information, especially benchmarks, comparing accuracy, and, and quality of the search. Uh, and that's why it's really difficult to select search engine for your project if you start project or you continue project. And uh, the agenda is, we are talking about a little bit about me, what is full text search, uh, different full text search engines like Postgres, Elastic, Hoosh, Sphinx, and search accuracy and search speed and what's next. I'm both expertise in Python and Golang and I created with my friends Australian startup which helps create uh, check out very quickly I speak here and uh, I have blog. I can't believe but 18 years ago there was no Google and other, other web search engines were around back then. And Asta La Vista, Hotbot, Incatomy, and all the web search. And, but what's more unbelievable is that 26 years ago, there was no web search at all. And now world is rapidly changed and the volume of information available and bandwidth gives us the opportunity to get this information. But unfortunately, the processing rate which human being can consume information does not change much. And this inevitably means transform searching from something that only geeks ever care about to something that every single of us to deal with on daily basis. Let's start it from simple text search. Text search is not a new problem. And every day, every developer do something like I like to do. We have C Python code base or your project code base, and we try to search all occurrences of order dict class. And the common tool for every Unix platform is grab, and you see that you can find it uh, less than three seconds on my laptop. And uh, if we try to do this task using ACK, it's like improved optimized grab for programmers. It's a little bit less than two seconds. And uh, my favorite one, but not super fast, it's Python version of search through code. It's like PSS, it's less than one second. And the most my favorite one, it's Golang based Platinum Search. Maybe everyone use it in Veeam or Yamax because it's super fast. It's like 50, 14 less than second. It's characteristic where I made tests. Uh, but okay, it's it's direct search. It's when you have pattern and search. It's it's simple problem. But what if we talk about full text search? And full text search provide capability to identify natural language documents and satisfy uh, a query and sort it by relevance to the query. And if you plan to read any books, uh, in the end you can find search index and it's, by the way, search index of one of my favorite book about Elasticsearch. And the purpose of sorting index is to optimize performance. Uh, and without index, the search engine win, uh, will scan every document and corpus, which would require considerable time and computing power. For example, while an index of 10,000 uh, documents can be acquired with milliseconds, uh, sequential scan of every word in 10,000 documents will, will take hours. Uh, advantages, disadvantages of index is additional computer, computer storage required to store this index. And... Uh, time to 
create time to create index or refresh it because data can change. Let's imagine we have simple example with two sentences and we try to build inverted index, it's common term in full text search for these two sentences. And first we split the content field on each document by on word basis and then we create sorted list like you see in the first column it's term like quick, the brown, etc. and then we mark each accuracy in each document and place where it's occur. For my example I exclude the places but only the fact that term exists in document. And if we try to search query using quick brown, you see that our table or our inverted index can show for us like accuracies, brown, a quick, and we see that brown exists in two docu documents and quick is only in one. Uh, but you can, you, you, can, you can find that I have a little bit redundancy in my index, that's why we should apply normalization. Uh, it means that we should lowercase quick, uh, pluralize docs, uh, using root forms of uh, verbs, etc. And maybe use synonyms like, uh, sorry, like jump and leap. Uh, okay, let's talk uh, about what search engines we have now at the current moment. There are lots of different types of search engines, uh, but today we will talk about only four of these. It's Postgres, Full Text Search, Elasticsearch, Python Search, Hoosh, and Sphinx. Uh, let's start from Postgres Full Text Search. Everybody use Postgres. It was created by Michael Stonebreak for eight years in 1986 and the interesting fact that full text search supported from version 8.3 it means that you can use it in every project because I'm not sure that you have less versions than 8 and last table version is 9.5 and uh, lots of free advantages for this database let's see example we have simple query uh, and simple text and we try to full text search through this query. In context of Postgres we should use two functions. It's text search vector, it's format when we transform your data and special function text search query. And the results will be looks like this. You see that uh, this results return true, it means that we find the results of our search. Uh, okay, next, we, all full text search, it's about indexes. I mean, if you want to understand how it's work, you should understand how indexes works. And Postgres provide two kind of indexes. First, it's generalized inverted index that I shown before in example, and second, it's generalized search tree based. And the last one is a little bit lossy because the index might produce uh, false matches because it has very limited hash function for uh, for search, for text which you try to search. It means that it can represent the same phrase with the same ID and you can find uh, false match. That's why it's a little bit not recommended, but uh, the differences between these two indexes is very simple. When you have data which static, it means that it's change uh, not so often, that's why you can use first one. If you have dynamic data which change every day, every minute, every second, and you try to search, you should use generalized search tree. Next, important it's ranking search results. It's how 
to measure how relevant documents are to particular query. So when there are many matches, the most relevant ones can be shown first. Sometimes it's very useful. And uh, Postgres provide two C-based functions. It's rank and rank close density, something like it. And, and uh, you can cover density, and you can uh, you can use it. And I have some small example for you. How to use it? Uh, it's next uh, after this slide. Uh, last but not least, it's highlighting results. Every user wants to see what he search and see what occurrences of what he tried to search. And for this, Postgres provides headline function, which uh, very easy. You just uh, use this function, and it will uh, mark uh, your results with some HTML tags, or etc. Uh, also, very important, it's stop words. Stop words. It's like English words, for example, which unuseful or uninformative, etc., etc. It's like it is, etc. And uh, working with stop words also included in settings of Postgres. And when you apply using text search vector function, you can uh, see that text search vector applied to your column, which have some information. And as a result, you see uh, like special format for Postgres where you see only useful information exclude stop words, like list stop word, instead of uh, because in there of unnecessary, no need to search using this word in some cases. Uh, next, uh, a little bit about Python. Postgres full text search provide for Python, if you use Django, uh, it's good news, because in Django 1.10, uh, already added Postgres search functionality, which uh, rely only Postgres full text search engine, and it means it will be super fast if you use it in your uh, project. Uh, old version of Django model is Django RM extension, it's written couple years ago, and it's working perfect with old version of Django. Uh, the third one is using SQL Alchemy. Uh, some example how to apply to your project. <clears throat> if you already have some model, which called page, you can just create search index, its special field, and overwrite your search manager where you should add configuration and search field and after update search field means <clears throat> on each save update or delete index will automatically update it by Postgres. And as a result you can do some very common ORM queries using keyword search. You just use search and you can search documentation and about. Only limitations that Postgres provide, and as a result, Django also, it's very simple uh, query construction mechanism. It means you can use only two Boolean operators. It's AND or OR. And you see that in the second example, I provide example with ABOUT, OR document, or Django, etc. Uh, according to Django 1.10 itself, uh, <clears throat> you can, as you can understand, they edit by default using underscore underscore search for each field. That's why uh, you can also use it without any installation like I showed in previous slide. And, uh, or you can annotate it with search vector and filter by cheese and see results. It's awesome because it will convert it for direct text search query, text search vector, SQL query, and Postgres will execute it very fast. And examples. Uh, yeah, this commit was made by uh, 
I'm not sure, but a couple months ago, it's super fresh information. There is no any documentation about this, <laughs> only in source code in this commit you can find it. Maybe they will update it, but I'm not sure that it's already done. Okay, let's talk about uh, finish with Postgres full text search. We have pros like quick implementation, you saw it, no dependency, Maybe disadvantages is need manual manage indexes because it's not done automatically. Uh, depend on Postgres. If you use MySQL, it will not work. If you use another database, it will not work. Uh, no analytics data. What I mean about this is this. It means I can't get analytics on search from Postgres. I can only search and that's all. If I want to get some important natural language text data, I can't do it. And very simple query builder. Okay, let's continue with Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is distributed scalable real-time search and analytics engine. It's very important because it enables us to search, analyze, and explore your data. It's based on Apache Lucene search index, which now is the most advanced and high performance uh, in the internet. So, uh, who use Elasticsearch? It's GitHub use Elasticsearch to query 130 billion of line of code. You every day do it. Stack Overflow use combine full text search with geolocation. Sometimes it's very useful. Uh, Guardian parse logs like lots of companies and Wikipedia try to provide full text search with uh, highlighted uh, data and uh, Datadog, Cloud, and other. The idea of Elastic Search very simple. It's it's not quite e equals, but it's like in parallel, you can understand how it works. It's You have relation database, you have Elasticsearch, you have database, you have indices, you have rows, you have types, columns equals documents, tables equals fields. The most important, it's maybe logs. Elasticsearch use optimistic concurrency control. It means when you try to change document in Elasticsearch, they just uh, update it and update version of this document. And it means when you search for, 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 for some document, you, it will use the last version of the document. Uh, according to Elasticsearch, there are lots of Python clients. It's default Python client, new version made by Honza Kral with async.io, and also DSL, when you can build your queries if you work with Elastic, you know how it's difficult sometimes work with these big JSONs and manipulate with it. It's annoying and Honza create DSL and it looks pretty awesome. Some examples. You can get data, you can create index with number of shards, number of replicas, you can scale it. Uh, you can add JSON to index, it's just like how you create data for your index. Uh, you can manage stop words, for instance, uh, you can add list of stop words. You can highlight results, my favorite feature, you can select tag, because sometimes it's also useful to select your predefined tag, not use default one and relevance. Relevance is you can explain query and you see what's weight and I remove lots of details but it's big big explanation why this query returns these results and how, which each value of weights and I like it. It's difficult to do in Postgres but it's really easy to understand and calculate why these results uh, first, if you, for example, override your relevance function or rank function, etc. Okay, 
Uh, next, very quickly, it sphinx. I only put on slide differences. Sphinx written in C++, sorry, C++, I found bug. And uh, it's used, for example, MySQL as data source. And uh, in comparing with Elastic, it's written not in Java. And uh, Sphinx assumes that you already have MySQL database and all other stuff based on MySQL. But it's not like mandatory. You can use Postgres, you can use any provider. And about Sphinx search server, a little bit difference is it's DB table, it's Sphinx index, DB rows, it's Sphinx documents, and DB columns, it's Sphinx fields and attributes. It's not sim similar to Postgres and Elasticsearch. Maybe sim similar to Elasticsearch. And query language, it's not uh, SQL. It's Sphinx query language, but it's very similar to default SQL. And you can find from your test one its index name, where much you have Python, and it will look something like it. It's, I mean, the, I put only differences. All other stuff very similar to Elastic. Uh, and last but not least, it's pure Python hoosh, which created by Matt Chaput. His idea was like, okay, my clients ha have no ability to install Java. And that's why he created full text search engine in pure Python. And it's not super fast, but in comparing with another pure Python search engines, it's super fast. And it has pluggable scoring algorithms. You can add lots of and configure lots of stuff. And by the way, more information you can find on his talk. I'm not ready to repeat it. And some small examples, Hoosh uh, depends a little bit on Postgres because it used Postgres, for example, stop words. And it's create frozen set dynamically for Postgres stop words. But you can select any set of stop words. I mean, it's just an example from source code. You also can highlight search results, assume that we, hit, we have hits in title, and the most interesting, it's, it used best match 25 uh, algorithms, which it's, by the way, it's ranking function, which used to search engines to rank matching documents according to relevance to given by search query. It's the common use algorithms. And it, it was cre developed in 1970s, I hope. And now, I created some comparison table for you because when I started work on my first project with full text search, it was difficult to understand lots of information and how to structure it. That's why I created some table where I can uh, find, and you see that Python 3 support most search engines, Swing, OpenPR. Uh, you have lots of clients, you, you can use this uh, table like reference. Uh, interesting that Postgres and Elastic have both async clients, Sphinx and Hoosh, no. And I added Django just for example. If you use Django, sometimes you need uh, some uh, ORMs, etc. That's why. Uh, you can find haystack very useful and but talking about haystack it's like provides modular search for Django and it's create one API layer under couple of different different search engines and provide you Django like Django or RAM functionality for search but I can't believe that it's really useful. When you have project, you create search, full text search, you apply Haystack, and then you decide, oh, okay, tomorrow I will be use Elastic Search, today Solar, to, and the day after tomorrow, Hoosh, and etc. It's strange because 
it's like only very very simple set of features all other features different in haystack that's why I called haystack like Swiss knife and it's useful but uh, not for specific task and uh, I created small pros and cons for you about haystack yeah it's easy to set up looks like Django RM uh, search engine independent support now for engines uh, if we go deeper search query set API very poor I mean it's it's very poor you, you can't uh, create very smart queries difficult to manage top words because you need go to search engine backend and do it by by hand by yourself haystack doesn't care about it uh, lose performance because you need like convert results to search query sets and work with it maybe in memory and model based it means that most uh, full text search engines try to promote uh, no SQL concept when you have like object or when you have like, document not model not one table that's why it's a little bit difficult and uh, the most I think the, the most ugly with Haystack it's lots of hard coded settings in search engine if you open source code of Haystack you can find hard coded elastic search settings hard coded settings for solar etc and it's annoying if you want to change something you need to change Haystack or patch it or something like it uh, let's continue with my table uh, next very difficult and interesting things which index each search engine use and I put like elastic user patch Lucina you can find more information about it it's default uh, inverted index as I said before Postgres use generalized inverted index and generalized uh, search trees uh, Sphinx has Sphinx has three opportunities it's disk indexes real time indexes and distributed by the way distributed index it's just like container for lots of disks and real time uh, indexes it's how you can scale your Sphinx and who should use very simple index folder as I uh, said before guy who create who he said just you have only Python and folder without any database Java etc that's why he uh, used simple approach and last column it's interesting sometimes when you have database you need to search uh, in the memory without creating index and it's possible only for Postgres I like this feature because you can use it uh, in all databases no need to create if you want you just could need to create index but you can search all other search engines you need to put get data from data source put it to index build index and then you only then you can search but Postgres can do it in real time for you next interesting it's ranking relevance and uh, etc uh, it's how which prob probability algorithms each engine use for search Elastic use very common term frequency and verse document frequency. It means how often your term or your query uh, occur in the whole document database. And according to Postgres, we already talked about CD rank. You can, uh, it's interesting that you can put some weights for CD rank, like input parameter, but it's, you, 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 you can influence to CD rank formula how to calculate rank just only some parameters Sphinx it's cool because lots of lots of uh, variants by default it use two factors first it's uh, major part it's approximately between the document text and the query uh, it's called like longest, longest common subsequences or something like it and very common known best match 25 and who use 
from my point of view, the most smart uh, relevance because it's improved best match 25. Uh, but uh, interesting <laughs> that you can replace any relevance function to hoosh and Sphinx has big table of a lots of formulas how to, I mean you, you also can configure it not like for Postgres or Elasticsearch you can't do it. According to configure stop words you can do it in all uh, engines you can highlight search results all engines, it's like common features that you need uh, Sometimes it's uh, useful to use synonyms and you can find that all these engines support synonyms only hoosh but you can do it manually to replace words or create dictionary which associate like one word with set of words like synonyms. About scaling I would like to say that the most scalable is Elasticsearch because it works from scratch and you can use it for Postgres, you should think about partitioning, table inheritance, etc. About Swing, I already said that it's used distributed searching and you can include lots of indexes in distribute index and it, it's how you can do it manually. Hoosh does not support any scales. And in the end, I would like to present for you some low test that I made in real production. I have one million music artists and I put it to each uh, search engine and I try to search because most of low tests that I found for search engines use like white noise. They generate like combination of letters and try to search. It does not make any sense. And performance result, it's interesting because uh, if data, I put it in one table, for example, for Postgres, and Postgres, uh, after the, when I create index, Postgres returning for five, four milliseconds, it last version, the last, last, uh, uh, the latest which I found, like 9.6 beta, or something like it. Elastic return in nine milliseconds, it's also pretty awesome, Sphinx return in six milliseconds, but I'm not sure that I configure it correctly. That's why maybe some results not super useful and Hoosh also has uh, less performance. And the question only if you have more data which not put in, in uh, Postgres. My next test, uh, task for me, I plan to do uh, more smart queries and I have database with 300 million records which I'm not, I'm not sure that I can put in one table in Postgres and etc. And uh, yeah, maybe results will be different. In the end, I would like to propose you to read some books which I found very useful for me about Elasticsearch, the scene, if you're interested in strings, if you're interested in swings and uh, very cool book about tone break which called Red Book about database systems. Uh, I created some list of references for you because it's really difficult to share with you details of each index and you can find it in uh, some very useful links and read about it because when you Stackled and your customer decide, okay, relevance should work, I mean, indexing should work, that or this, you can read about each index and find for you uh, in which case your index will be uh, more efficient. Also about ranking. Ranking is a really difficult part, that's why I also put it to links. You, you can read of, about each scoring, how it's calculated, and et cetera, et cetera. Because w performance uh, will depend on two big uh, factors. First, it's ranking algorithm, because you should calculate ranks. And second, it's indexing, how you build your index. And thank you. Slides you can find on this link. And uh, thank you for your attention and 
we hurrying and question please well any questions I got a question about operators uh, in uh, Django full text search. Uh, you mentioned uh, that there are only AND and OR operators. Mm -hmm. uh, can uh, we combine it? I mean, John and Do, uh, or yes. uh, Foo yes. and Bar? Yep. Yes, you can. Okay, thank it's, you. By the way, it's feature not about Django, it's feature, I will show you. It's feature of, maybe this slide, it's, it's feature of uh, Postgres. Okay. All other questions? Yeah, please. Hi. Um, what's a good way to compare the performance of different search engines, not in terms of uh, speed of response, but in terms of the quality of ranking? Yeah, it's, I understand. Thank you for question. It's uh, what I am doing on everyday basis. I work with uh, our application not just uh, full text search through data we try to uh, match users and etc by his interests and it means that uh, the ranking is very important for me and I have lots of tests for that how I, I build very big queries uh, with and or with synonyms without synonyms etc and uh, uh, I I prepare expected result manually, and I run my test and see results, et and etc. Yeah, it's like only manual, unfortunately, work. It depends on your real task. All other questions? Hi. Um, apart from Haystack, do you have any recommendation from Django and Elasticsearch? Django and Elasticsearch? Yeah, for combining with those two. Uh, from my experience, it's like uh, using uh, just Python client. I mean, you can create managed task which uh, uh, will refresh your index if you plan to get data from... Uh, I mean... Maybe you plan to store your data in Postgres or MySQL and uh, you need like on some action, you plan to refresh index and search from Elasticsearch. Uh, I found great solutions that you can just use uh, simple Python uh, client Elasticsearch DSL or Elasticsearch.py, which Honza Kral maintain mo mostly. And just but only add uh, uh, manage pi common to refresh index, create like uh, asynchronous tasks for refresh index, etc. If you plan to use haystack, uh, you can. Uh, I don't remember the name, but uh, I found interesting library which overrides some settings from haystack, and you can like add uh, your synonyms, change configurations, etc. And I recommend to use it if you plan to use haystack. But problem of haystack is that uh, it's not support last version of Elasticsearch. And you, 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 you will stackle on, I don't know, 1.7.5 or something like it. Yeah. Yeah, please. Is there a reason why you haven't talked a lot about solar? Could you please repeat? Is there a reason why you haven't talked a lot about the solar um, search engine, S-O-L-R? Ah, so uh, I have no experience with solar, but I hope that it w solar also use uh, Lucene. And only difference is that I know solar is not easy to scale. You can, but it's not so easy. And if you already use solar, uh, maybe you should continue. But for new projects, I think I found Elastic more like uh, useful for me, something like it. Okay. Thank you very much.